Jessica. How you doing? Hi. Good. How are you doing today? We are here for what? Uncomfortable head questions. Yay. Oh my God, everybody <laughs> loves those. And we got some great ones today. I think you're going to really like these guys. If you're watching this, you don't, you want to stay tuned to the very end. That's what, what I'm going to tell you. Stay tuned to the very end because there's a really interesting one at the end that I think Ooh. affects a lot of pet owners. Really? And if you don't stick in there to the very end, you're not going to see it. Awesome. So let's jump right in here. Uh, I've got Doug. Doug, Doug has a okay. dog. And the dog's name is David. David the dog. Okay, we'll go along All with right. that. We'll go along with that. I like it's it. Golden Retriever. Uh, and it's a great dog. It behaves really well, but they have one big problem. Now, uh, David the dog, there's too many D's okay. here. Uh, Doug, <laughs> Doug and David, David the dog. Yes. Um, has the dog indoors, okay? And yep. it'll go outside, you know, to do its business and all that. But it, it's very close to the family. But the problem that we're having with David the dog, I'm having a hard time with these words, <laughs> is that David the dog is doing something they don't want. It's begging for food at almost every single meal. It whines, it barks, it jumps every single time they sit down to eat, and they just want some peace of mind. What would you recommend to this family? Oh, whoa. There's a lot to unpack in begging. I will say thank you for your question, Doug, and give David some ear scratches from me. <laughs> I would appreciate that. Um, there, but there is, there's a lot to unpack in begging. Dogs, okay. Generally begging starts because somebody has fed your dog from the table. And dogs, that's not gonna be easily forgotten. Generally six months plus, your dog is gonna remember that food source. Um, so if anybody is feeding your dog from the table, stop it immediately, but understand your dog is gonna remember that source of food being at the table for at least the next six months. So you have to get everybody on your fam in your family on board um, in a training routine and that may not be easy to do, but if everybody is frustrated enough, it should be easy enough to get everybody on board with the same training routine. Do not feed your dog from the table. What I will say though, is that oftentimes, now, now that, that's one little piece of the puzzle and that it's a symptom. Your dog begging is a symptom of improper environmental management on the part of you and your family. Uh, meaning somebody in your family, it may have been you, I don't know, Doug, it may have been you, um, fed your dog while sitting at the table. That's just one little part, that's a symptom. What I would say is that in the meantime, while the whole family is on board with no one in the family feeding David, while sitting at the table. So if anybody is sitting at the table, nobody is feeding David from that table in that location. One, we need to do a better job managing his environment. You can feed him at the same time you and your family are sitting down to eat. That way he's occupied. Um, you can keep him in the kitchen while you guys are sitting down to eat. That way he doesn't even have access uh, to, to where you are at the dinner table. That's another way, but managing his environment is gonna be key. I also want to mention, and I feel like I bring this up in every single one of these Uncomfortable Questions videos, but it is key. It is a huge factor in so many things that's going on with our dogs. What are you feeding David? What is he eating and can you improve upon that? Because if we are feeding David the best possible food we can provide to, to him, which is a fresh food balanced diet, um, he's gonna be less likely to be seeking food elsewhere. Kibble may not be doing it for him and it shouldn't be. And it isn't going to be for every dog out there and cat eating it because it doesn't provide the best nutrition um, on, a, on a level of like bioavailability because of these synthetic vitamins and minerals. Yeah, I can't talk. <laughs> because of these synthetic vitamins and minerals that are used to create it, um, it's not as bioavailable as fresh food is. Also keeps your dog or cat in a constant state of dehydration because it, it's lacking the water. But, um, but when your dog is more satisfied with their food, 
they are less likely to seek out other food sources. So a few different things that we need to be looking at here, and um, I'd be happy to talk with you about it more in detail. Check the link in the description and join the group, and we can do that. Awesome. Good, good, good things going on here. Hey, got another question from Carlos. Carlos actually has a problem at the front door. And okay. He actually sent us a picture, oh. and you can put that picture up on the screen possibly. He has a mixed little black dog, and uh, he actually took this picture as somebody um, was opening the front door, and somebody was walking down the sidewalk, and he's got a okay. mixed poodle. And this is what happens every time he opens the door. The dogs bolt. I mean, they bolt. And as you can see in this image right here, these dogs are bolting and uh, he doesn't know what to do. They run out in the street. He's afraid they're going to get hit by a car. He doesn't know what to do. What can Carlos do? Carlos, yeah, I know that's incredibly dangerous, right? Because we don't know what's waiting for our dog as they bolt out the door. Um, so definitely you want to mitigate any risk here. You want to, here's what you want to do, Carlos. And here's the truth. And this is the truth in a lot <laughs> of the questions that I get, um, you need to do a better job managing your dog's environment. Um, they shouldn't have, they shouldn't be right there or in front of you at the door when you're opening the door for one, but there are things you can do to train your dog to be calmer at the door and to manage their impulses. So impulse control is a big thing. So managing your dog's environment is key, but Training impulse control is also key, and I have actually done videos about this that are already on my channel, um, showing you exactly what to do with your dog so you can train step by step with your dog. And I will, there's a link in the description below. So after you're done watching this video, um, go down to the description and right under where I list this question, there will be a link to the next video that you need to watch and work with your dog. Um, working on their impulse control so that uh, you and your dog are working together to keep them calmer at the door and have them actually learn to listen to you while you're at the door and they're not bolting out the door. Um, it is very important. So I do recommend you start working on this right away. And again, like I was saying in the question just before this, um, everybody in, in the household needs to be on board doing the same things and working the same training. So get your whole family, round them up, and watch the, the video that I linked in the description for you. Awesome. That's really helpful. And I know, I mean, from the picture that we saw, <laughs> um, that that is a really scary situation. Yeah, it is. Okay, awesome. So we've got one more question. One more question one left more. here, Jessica. Okay. Uh, and this one is pretty interesting because the same thing happens to humans. Okay. And I know when it happens to humans, and this is the one I told you to stick around for, we do something. But a lot of times when it happens with dogs, we don't do anything. So okay. I think this person is asking for a suggestion. But let me get on with the question here. I don't want to ramble on here. Um, this is from Randy. Randy. And Randy has an indoor dog. Uh, it looks like it's a Cocker Spaniel. Okay. Uh, but every now and then, Randy's dog will get runny poop. And he's not quite um, sure what to do about that. Um, you know, he's taking the dog to the vet. The vet says the dog's healthy. But every now and then, the dog just gets runny poop. And we don't want runny poop in the house. We don't want runny poop anywhere because it gets in his fur and all these things. And I won't get all gross, but none of us want this, okay? Yeah. Now, what would you suggest that a person do with their dog? I know with an adult, you know, a human, we do certain things. What do you suggest with the dog? So for a dog... Um I, I, I want to say that I really appreciate that you're paying attention to your dog in this manner because a lot of people are like, oh, that's gross and just avoid it and ignore it. And that's not a good thing because uh, paying attention to what is coming out of your dog um, is a very, very good indicator of health in your dog. Um, of course, there are other ways to indicate health and that you should be checking with your dog on a daily basis. Yeah, so it does happen. I mean, dogs get upset stomachs just like we do, and there are a lot of different reasons for it. The first thing I would say is, let's talk about what you're feeding your dog on a daily basis. And I don't wanna keep going on and on and on about the same thing, but fresh food balanced diet, that's the goal. Like, like that's the goal, that's what we want to be feeding our dogs. Um, so check the link in the description to the group, grab the files in the group. Once you join, read through them, you'll get a much better understanding of 
why and what to do. Um, but yeah, let's let's first work on what we're feeding our dog every day. But it's still going to happen. Even with my dog, she eats the the best food that I can get for her. And every once in a while, she still gets an upset stomach and does have runny poop. I totally understand. My protocol is this. I immediately stop feeding anything to her. So she's not getting treats. Um, she's not getting table scraps. And then after about, I, I try to fast her for around 12 hours. And then once I feed her again, and, and you can even fast a little bit longer than that, but that's just generally my protocol um, is 12 hours. And then when I do start feeding her again, I feed her a mixture, usually 50-50 of cooked turkey um, I usually like to do ground turkey and sweet potato. And of course, sweet potato is cooked as well. So that's what she's going to be eating for her meals over the next couple of days. And once I see that her stool has uh, firmed up again, then we can start adding in her regular or you know, providing her her regular meals. Um, but that's the protocol for me. And of course, you know, I always have to say, make sure you have discussed any medical issues, anything like this with runny poop with your veterinarian. You said in your question that you have talked to your veterinarian about it. So I completely understand that you are doing what you're supposed to be doing on that front. But I do have to mention that for anybody else watching that your very first course of action is to contact your veterinarian. Um, but once you do, that's my protocol. Fast for about 12 hours, feed uh, turkey and sweet potato cooked about 50 50 and then once you notice their stool is back to normal you can go back to the regular food which should be a balanced fresh food diet and you're going to see that they're going to have a lot less stomach issues <laughs> um, and there are lots of other benefits um, because about 80% of your immune system 80% of your dog's immune system is located in your gut so when you're feeding better you're going to see overall health improvements and the immune system is also going to be improved. So lots of wonderful benefits from feeding a balanced fresh food diet. I hope that answered your question, but make sure you check the link in the description to join the group and get the free files on feeding your dog and that will help you moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Jessica, let me ask you real quick. Yeah. I know, you know, growing up and I don't know what it was like growing up for you, but a lot of times we were told to feed them chicken and rice. Why wouldn't you just feed them chicken and rice? So yeah, a lot of people think you should be feeding your dog chicken and rice if they have an upset stomach. And I understand that. And for me, feeding rice, I've done research on this and Dr. Karen Becker, who is the world's most followed veterinarian, um, an incredibly trusted source. She's a holistic veterinarian and if you've never heard of her, I mean, she's just amazing. But um, I definitely fangirled out when I got to meet her one time. But um, rice in the digestive system is going to uh, go through a fermentation process, which is going to produce excess gases in the gut, in the digestive system. So if your dog's stomach is already upset and we add in chicken, I'm sorry, if we add in rice, which is going to ferment and increase gas production inside of the digestive system, increase gas plus an upset stomach, that, that doesn't make sense, right? You don't want to add an irritant on, some, on top of something that's already irritated. So let's stay away from the rice. Awesome answer. Oh my God, <laughs> it's been great today. You've really helped out I think a lot of people with this I and guys so. if you agree put yes below yes like, comment yes below, yes below. <laughs> just give me a yes below or it helped or something something that is similar to yes I like this this is awesome this is wonderful any of those things and of course what else could they do can they post questions they can post questions post comments I, in fact that's how you're going to get your questions answered is if you post your questions down below in the comments section of this video. Um, also give this video a thumbs up, like the video. It is going to be a compliment to me, which I would very much appreciate and also help the YouTube algorithm. And if you look right down there at that subscribe button and it is red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell. Select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you when I post new videos and you don't have to come searching for them, which is amazing right thanks so much jessica that's awesome 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 and you know what 
she may answer your question and call out your name like I was doing today. Yay. So if you want to be famous, you want to have your name in one of these videos, <laughs> make sure you put a question below with your name and we will call you out. If you don't want to be called out, say, don't call out my name and we won't do that. That's all you got to do. Simple. Yeah, real simple. Thank you so much for being here with me, guys, today in this YouTube video. I really appreciate you for watching. Do please comment below, post your questions. I would love to answer them for you. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe button. And I'll see you in our next video. I hope you and your pet are doing well today. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.